Hi, I'm uh, Jan Selling. I'm head of BBC Studios Nordics, Formats and Productions. In the Nordics and the scripted side, I must say that we are way past Nordic Noir now. People still have Nordic Noir when they think scripted. And it is, of course, still an attractive uh, genre to be in, money-wise. People still want to buy it, so it, it has high commercial value. So there's still some, some of that. But most broadcasters and producers in the Nordics, they want to move away from that very boring brand. It's been been there, done that for them. They want to move on. They want to move the genres, new exciting ways. So it's very historical. It's close to heart. It's family. It's love affairs. It's epic uh, dramas. It's, it's new stuff that's coming out right now. And we see this travel just as much as the Nordic Noir did. On the unscripted side, I must say that we are perceived that and we are still a very good creative hotspot. Main reason probably being that we are a small territory, we are a very competitive territory, we have well-educated, very critical viewers, so anything that succeeds in the Nordics to uh, well-educated and critical viewers and under high competitive conditions is bound to succeed outside the Nordics as well. So it's a good test bed for new unscripted formats. Everybody has very high speed volume broadband. So the consumer behavior pattern in the Nordics is one step ahead rest of Europe. That is why the Netflix, the Amazons, the Apple, Facebook, HBOs, they go and look in the Nordics and fish in the Nordics and have partnerships in the Nordics. Because if there's a behavior pattern in the Nordics, they know that it's bound to happen outside the Nordics as well so very, very soon. They, it's still a very much uh, a linear business, but I think the, uh, the uh, Nordic broadcasters are, are, are again just a tiny step ahead of the rest of the market because they already five years ago started to premiering things on their online services. So on their SVOD services, whether it's FVOD as public service or it's SVOD for the commercial channels, they started premiering things and acquiring originals for their platforms first and then re-ran them on their linear channels. So they have already a step ahead on building loyal audiences and a consumer, again, a consumer behavior pattern that people are used to going to those platforms to consume, uh, whether it's public service or com commercial content, they go to those channels as well. Uh, so they are very much into that space. Uh, the young viewers, they grew up watching the public service channels and the children's shows. They already felt attached to that brand, but they slightly they lose it when they get into their teens. And they start spreading their interest onto YouTube and to all other kind of platforms. And the way they've been addressing this issue, mainly the public service channels, has been to be innovative and respectful towards the behavior pattern of the youth. So you, they come up with Scum, for instance, that has rolled, rolled the world and, and has inspired a lot of other shows which uses exactly the same launching mechanism. It's about the storytelling and be present on the platforms where the youth are present. The uh, production environment, the independent sector and the super indies and the broadcasters really, really want to speak and connect with the rest of the world. So we are very open-minded to co-productions, to co-partnerships, and it all starts with the first conversations and the personal relationship.